Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nice New Chunga Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about our top 10 NBA players heading into this year's 2022 NBA season. But before we hop into that, you know we got to give a quick shout out to a subscriber today, as always. And today is going to be T-Ray481. Thank you so much, bro, for like, comment, and subscribing, turn on post notification, and showing so much love and support towards our YouTube channel and our podcast overall. We greatly appreciate it. Now, before we hop into today's top 10 NBA players list, we just want to clarify, me and Greg, we got a few differences on our list and everything so basically what we're going to do for each and every single ranking i'm going to have greg you know tell me who his top 10 players are and then you know we're just going to go one by one and everything but starting at number 10 greg who do you have i got anthony davis and some people might say damian lillard but i got anthony davis if this guy's if he's not injured this guy is arguably a top 10 player no question he's great on defense he has a variety of moves on the on the offensive end he, he, he just has a great impact on his team when he's with the Pelicans, I know it didn't translate to a lot of wins in the playoffs, but he he averaged 30 in the playoffs when he was with the Pelicans uh, with those teams. And uh, I just think he just brings so much on the defensive end, a shot blocker, a guy who just who, who's just a great rim protector. And he just does a lot of things on the floor that really benefit the Lakers now and benefited the Pelicans when he's with them. Yeah, I mean, for number 10, I got Joel Embiid out of Philadelphia. Um, Obviously, you know, he had an MVP caliber season last year, finishing top three in the voting, I believe. And, you know, this is a guy, he had career highs in points per game, free throw percentage, free throw attempts, free throws made, effective field goal percentage, essentially every statistical category from an offensive standpoint besides steals and blocks. But, you know, Joel Embiid, he's a top two center in the entire NBA. He finished fourth in scoring. This guy essentially has no flaws offensively, and he's a matchup nightmare for any opposing big on a uh, opposing end of the floor but the reason why I have Joel Embiid so low is simply because you know lack of postseason success you know this is a guy that constantly getting bounced out of the first round second round um, never been to a conference finals appearance and he doesn't really make his teammates better you know you see guys like Nikola Jokic these other big men you know they got the ability to pass and you know just create a lot of offense for their team offensively and you know Joel Embiid, you know, he's somebody that does a great job of putting the ball in the basket and everything. But, you know, even with him doing that, you saw how bad the Philadelphia 76ers looked this year. So that's why I have Joel Embiid at number 10. But for number nine, Greg, who do you got, bro? I got Joel Embiid. And I think he's last year he was an MVP candidate. He had a dominant season, really helped, really was big for the Sixers. Like I said, he's a great, he's great, great in the post. I don't like him really stretching it out a little bit, but that's part of the game and where it's going. But what he, he just brings, he brings for his career 1.7 blocks is a great rim protector great interior force and just really inserts his dominance i think with the sixers and and the and the lineup that they have and just they, it hasn't really translated in the playoffs but i think joel and b signing that extension with them it's going to be huge for them going forward i think he he brings a lot to the a lot of impact to the court and has developed his game a lot yeah at the number nine position you can interchange a lot of guys uh yeah. for me personally i got damian lillard at the spot um, I got him ahead of, you know, Joel Embiid and Anthony Davis just because I feel like Damian Lillard, he's a top two point guard in the entire NBA. I mean, when you saw what he was able to do in the clutch, this is a guy that, you know, he's the best clutch player of our entire generation. You know, he, he was number one in points per game in the clutch last season. Only player shooting 50, 40, 90 splits in those scenarios. And he led the Blazers to a 22 and 12 record in those scenarios as well. And that's not to mention what he did in the postseason. This postseason, he had no blunders offensively. I mean, he was second in points per game with 34.3, third in assists with 10.2. But the reason why Damian Lillard is not a top eight, top seven player in the NBA is because his inconsistency. You've seen in the past, you know, he he's had 10 point, uh, 12 point playoff performances in everything and then you know he he'll end up turning around maybe go off for a nearly 30 point triple double or something of that nature and you know the fact that he's now had back-to-back first round exits in the postseason this year he lost to the Denver Nuggets last year he lost to the Los Angeles Lakers in the first round so yeah that's why I have Damian Lillard at nine but for number eight Greg who do you got I got Jokic you got to put the the, uh, the reigning MVP in here and just because just what he brings to the table I mean a triple double threat a uh, guy who a great passer for a big man haven't really seen that since the uh, Sabonis is dad um a guy who just really makes his teammates better can can really score with the best of them uh, just really helps his team out in the playoffs really helps jamal murray um not not having him to be a really playmaker he can really just do his 
really do his thing at that point guard position really just gives all the other role players in the right spots and really really just helps them out on that end the only downside of with Jokic is his defense but I think he'll gradually get better at that and uh, really just con continue to contribute for this team I think going forward he's only 26 he's just only going to get better and I see a lot see a see a lot another, maybe another MVP out of Jokic yeah, I, I like Jokic as well. I got him a little bit higher on my list, but at number eight, I got to go with Luka Doncic. You know, arguably the best 22-year-old of all time. I still think it's LeBron James, more than likely, but that's a, a debate for another day. But, you know, he's the best player under 25. I mean, this is a guy that averaged nearly a triple-double on the regular season. 27, 8, and 8 off, you know, great efficiency for the most part. Led the Mavs in points per game, assists per game, and he was the youngest player to make an all-NBA team this year. And he actually made first-team all-NBA over guys like Damian Lillard, Chris Paul and Kyrie Irving so that lets you know how well of a basketball player this guy is overall and you know not to mention it carried over to the postseason and he put up a, some historic playoff numbers you know he averaged 35 8 and 10 and he nearly eliminated the Los Angeles Clippers but Kawhi Leonard and Paul George they just were not having that but the reason why you know Luka Doncic isn't a top five player in the NBA let alone a top six player in the NBA in my opinion it's just simply because you know I think his his elders are just a little bit better than him right now. You know, they actually affect winning and everything. I know he's young, but we've seen multiple first round exits out of Luka Doncic. But I think maybe heading into next year, by the All-Star break, he could be considered a top five, top six player in the NBA. So Luka Doncic, I got him for number eight. But Greg, who okay. do you have for number seven? And I got Luka at number seven. I just, Luka has that LeBron X to his game. You see, he's a triple-double threat. This guy can, as besides his inefficiency sometimes, I think this guy can really, he can really impact the team. He really brings a lot to the Mavericks. And I think outside of Tim Hardaway and Kate, uh, Christoph Porzingis, they really don't really have like a, a really, a, really scores on the team. So him averaging eight assists and really make, try, putting these guys in situations sometimes to make them to make them better i think that in carrying these guys through the playoffs i mean really they he, he gets so close and he puts up the stats and does his part so i have to put luke at seven because he, if you take him off the mask they don't really have a guy who can really just help you take him off the mask they lose a great impact a great guy who can really just put everybody in the right spots and i think luca is a rising star can be but but behind Giannis in the future as a top two player in the league yeah, I mean, I, I can't be too mad at that. But at number seven, I'm going to go with the MVP and Nikola Jokic. Yep. You know, the, he's obviously coming uh, fresh off of an MVP caliber season. Um, the lowest draft pick to actually win the award. At, uh, he was drafted, you know, 41st in the second round. And he's a first center since Tim Duncan, who went back to back in the in 02 and 03 to win the MVP award. So we got to give kudos, you know, Nikola Jokic. But I mean, as far as his overall game, to an just to analyze it, you know, he's the best passing big in the entire NBA with 8.3 assists per game. He's one of the best playmakers in the entire NBA from that standpoint. And he's actually improved drastically as a scorer in the NBA. You know, just last season, he went from 19.9 points per game and he shot up to 26.4 points per game. So, you know, that lets you know he's putting in the work this off season. And he also improved his three point percentage. Hasn't really been all that great of a floor spacer throughout his entire NBA career but you know he went from 31% to 38% this year and not to mention you know he had career highs everywhere except for rebounds and field goal percentage but the reason why you know Nikola Jokic is so low on this list in my opinion is simply because you know his play it kind of dropped off this postseason uh, you know this is a guy he shot 27% from the three-point line 68% from the free throw line and his points and assists definitely declined so I gotta you know knock him for that a little bit but other than that Nikola Jokic he's definitely one of the best players in the entire NBA but at number six Greg let us know who you got I got Harden probably arguably one of the best ISO players he the way his play style and what he does and how he how he gets his teammates involved and how he scores is just incredible and uh, people hate on him for that but I got to give him credit at number six and just for him it's really his durability the last few years especially um, especially this year him not being on the court that really hurt the Nets and a reason why I have him so low he's played with some great players guys like Katie Russ and just can't even Chris Paul couldn't really get it done and even this year couldn't get it done with the Nets so I have to have I have to have him at number six for that reason yeah, uh, at number six, I'll take Kawhi Leonard. I'm okay. taking Kawhi Leonard. You know, he's one of the best two-way players in the entire NBA. Made all NBA first team. He's got the ability to, you know, make the game when it's shot for you and get the game when it's stopped on the opposing end of the basketball. And then, not to mention, you know, this is a guy who was on the verge of having a 50-40-90 season. Average six, um, 
He was sixth in points per game this postseason with 30.4 points per game from that standpoint. And then he was second in steals per game this postseason with 2.1. So that lets you already know that he's one of the best two-way defenders in the NBA, like I stated earlier. But, you know, he also helped the Clippers reach their first conference finals, despite him, you know, not playing the final games of that second round series against the Utah Jazz. And, you know, he also made history by becoming um, the first team uh, in association with the Los Angeles Clippers, obviously, overcoming two 2-0 deficits in the same playoff run. And not to mention, this is a guy that was an all defensive second team uh award winner so Kawhi Leonard definitely top six in the NBA if you ask me but at number five Greg let us know who you have there at number five I got Kawhi and you, like you said arguably one of the best one of the best two-way players if this guy's healthy and doesn't load manage he can he can really put he can really just infuriate your team really be a problem for your for for opponents i mean he just he he gets out there on defense he can lock up your best player he can score his mid his mid-range game is so pure he 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 just knocks down he has a plethora of moves in the, in that area and really just um really just gets it done on both sides of the ball i mean the thing about Kawhi is he's he's won he's won two rings and just really just helps teams made the raptors better when he joined them and but the downside of with Kawhi is obviously the injuries and not being as vocal at number five i'm gonna go with james Harden. I know you had him at six, Greg, but yeah. I, I think he's a top five player in the NBA um, without a doubt. I mean, this is a guy that we, we don't have too many guys on this list that can erupt for a 60 point triple double. And, you know, James Harden, he definitely separates himself from the rest of the pack when it comes to that. And, you know, he's arguably the best combination guard in the entire NBA. He can significantly raise the ceiling of any NBA team that he can hop onto. I don't know if Kawhi Leonard really has that capability as, you know, in comparison to James Harden from yeah. from a, a rate standpoint. But I mean, James Harden overall, I mean, this is a guy that excels in the pick and roll. You know, he's one of the best pick and roll offensive players in the entire NBA. He's got extended range, 36% from that standpoint. And he led the NBA in isolation scoring with 8.7 per game. And not to mention, the reason why I have James Harden over Kawhi Leonard is simply because he was able to put up similar, if not better numbers this um, regular season in compared to Kawhi Leonard as a second option. So I definitely have to go with James Harden at number five but for number four Greg let us know who you got I got Curry Curry was in the MVP race last year and just really carried that Warriors team had dropped 30 average 30 five, five rebounds five assists and just shot really good from the three-point line 42 percent and really just keep, continues to show like why he's the best best three-point shooter of all time like just really can really lead his team has a has good handles and I mean, this dude just just makes plays on the court, and I was just really impressed with what Steph can do. And you have to have him in the top five with the team that he did this year, that he had this year. Yeah, for sure. I, I, this is the first one that we agree on. It took us <laughs> to get to the number four <laughs> spot to finally do so. But yeah, I got Steph Curry at number four. I mean, he put up better numbers than his MVP MVP seasons. Excuse yeah. me. Um, he, he became the scoring champ this year with 32 points per game, which is actually a career high for him. And he also averaged career highs in three pointers made per game, which with which we have 5.3 a game. And he's considered the best point guard in the NBA undisputedly. I mean, this guy, he shot 42% from the three-point line, and then he broke a ton of records last season. You know, he became the first player since Michael Jordan to score 25 points on 50% shooting in nine straight games. Then he ends up making the most threes in a month in NBA history with 85. And not to mention the fastest player to reach 300 threes in an NBA season with just 58 games. And lastly, he became the franchise leading scorer, passing the all-time great Wilt Chamberlain with 17,818 points. So Steph Curry, definitely a top four player in the NBA without a doubt. But at number three, Greg, please shock the world with your number three player in the NBA. <laughs> hey, man, y'all going to be mad, but it's KD. It's Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant coming. You know, I have to give him his props. Coming back from an Achilles injury and pulling that tendon that he did against the Raptors um, and putting up the stats that he did, very impressive. 26, 7, and 5, shooting 45% from the three-point line. Um, just really Really, just really was really valuable to the Nets but the thing about KD is like I just can't put him over Giannis and I can't put him over LeBron right now just because I, his injury history and he's played KD has to show me that he can win by himself okay he's been with multiple he's been with multiple superstars Steph Harden Russ um and he He's only got it done with Curry and Clay. Couldn't get it done with Harden and Russ. And so I really want to. I want him to show me that that if if I'm a, if I'm gonna put him top three, can he get it done by himself? So I'm looking. I'm looking for that going forward for KD. And this is why he's at the three spot for me. Yeah, I had Kevin Durant at three as well. And I know a lot of people, they'll be upset with this one. But, you know, just hear me out for a little second. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, he's an all-time great scorer in NBA history. He can essentially fit within any offensive scheme, you name it. Um, he's the most efficient jump shooter in the entire NBA, if you ask me. And he doesn't shoot less than 40% anywhere on the floor. 
So that already lets you know that he's a phenomenal all-time great shooter, right? But not to mention, he's also the leading scorer in the fourth quarter of this past postseason. And he's an all-NBA caliber defender if he, you know, gives effort on that side of the basketball. But the reason why I don't have him as, you know, a top two player in the NBA is a similar reason as to, you know, why Greg doesn't have him. Um, yeah rank that high either it's because you know he still hasn't proven to us that he can lead a team to the nba finals i mean we saw him jump ship and join the golden state warriors and he played his part and you know he contributed a lot he was the best player on that roster but the reason why you went to brooklyn is to showcase to everybody that you are able to you know win in nba finals with you being the leader on the team and he still hasn't proved that to us so that's why i have kevin durant at number three but number two greg let us know who you have there People are going to be surprised, but I, 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 you can really go either way, LeBron or Giannis, but I have Giannis. I think the season that Giannis had last year was incredible. I think he, he played very well, led the Bucks to the championship, and really just showed his strengths. I mean, really played really, really well. 28, 11, uh, 5 assists, uh, 1.2 1. steals, 1.2 blocks. Which just really, he's an impactful player on both sides of the floor. We've never seen a player like Giannis, and the way his performance in the playoffs was really, 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 really intriguing to me and really showed that this guy ha can be a can be the best player going forward in this league and I think he will but the thing about Giannis is he just has to continue to develop on the develop on the offensive end uh, continue to be more effective on the offensive end and just be a better decision maker on the offensive end I just don't think he has that over LeBron so for that reason I, ha I have to put Giannis at number two yeah, and at number two, I'm gonna actually go with LeBron James. And this is very, this is an unbiased opinion, but yeah. I think LeBron James is better than Kevin Durant it's still at this standpoint in his career because, you know, he's he's still the better playmaker, the better rebounder. He's just as good offensively, even though, you know, Kevin Durant has phenomenal shooting splits. And this is a guy that, you know, he was a front runner for MVP at age 36 before his injury. And then he also made the all NBA third team, despite him having a, you know, kind of shysty second half of the season due to that injury and everything, because he was a little bit hobbled. That bothered him to a certain degree and we already know when healthy LeBron James um, has shown us just last season that he could win an NBA title for you and be the finals MVP so that's one of the biggest reasons as to why I have LeBron over Kevin Durant but the main reason is because LeBron James doesn't really need excessive talent around him to contend you saw what he was able to do last year he had a decent roster built around him but essentially LeBron James and Anthony Davis were your main offensive options and then you had a lot of feeling and complimentary guys and I don't think Kevin Durant has really shown us that he can, you know, win uh, at the highest level with that ca caliber talent around him. He's always had multiple all-stars around him and everything, that, let alone that have played in their prime. So that's why I have LeBron James with a slight edge over Kevin Durant. But at number one, Greg, who is the best player in the NBA heading into next year? It's LeBron James, and it, it's LeBron James. It's just LeBron James. I mean, 30. He's 36 year old. 36 year old, still consistent. Was in was in the conversation for the MVP last year. A guy who's uh, can give you 27, seven and seven each night and just shows up in the playoffs can play with any can play with anybody and make them better has high iq a great leader um just does everything on the report continues to improve his game I, he's going to continue to work on that three-point shot he has a great has great post moves can just literally find anybody on the court make his teammates better and i think a guy who's going to just the more the higher his age keeps going up the better i think the better he's going to continue to get he might lose his athleticism a little bit with these injuries but i think he can still produce at a high level and i just think that nobody is on his level right now yeah you can say Giannis, but i just think at a, a guy who's been consistent since he's been in the league at 19 or 19 or 20 and continues at, and that 30 stick is still at the top of his game you can't can't take away his durability and his his longevity has to be in question of when you talk about LeBron James so I have to go with him at number one yeah I mean I, I guess I can't be too mad at that uh I think LeBron James undisputedly is a top three player in the NBA I mean we saw what he was able to do last year for the most part before he got injured you know he led the Lakers to the best record in the entire NBA before Anthony Davis's injury and then he also he had a higher defensive rating than Giannis Antetokounmpo and Kevin Durant with 106.1 yeah. so I, I guess I guess I can go with LeBron James um I or I can't be too mad at you for having him but I think in in this current state of moment I would actually go with Giannis Antetokounmpo he's 
a generational talent in comparison to, you know, LeBron James and Kevin Durant as well. But, I mean, this is a guy that can guard one through five. I mean, he's the best pick and roll defender in the NBA. Argue with your mother. He's an elite <laughs> scorer despite him having, you know, subpar shooting numbers and everything. And this is a guy that, you know, he also cannot be played in single coverage. And even some team defenses struggle to guard him. You know, the, if the late... If the help defense is late, you're, you're probably going to be in trouble if you're the opposing team. But Giannis, he put up a lot of historic numbers last year, especially in the postseason. I mean, he averaged 37, 13, and 7 in closeout games. He was one of seven players to score 50 points in the NBA Finals. And he was the second player to actually clinch an NBA Finals title with 50 points outside of Bob Pettit. And he was also the first player since LeBron to score 600 points, grab 200 rebounds, and dish out 100 assists in an NBA playoff run. So that's why I have Giannis and as as the best NBA player heading into next season. Now, the, the players on this list and everything, they're subdued to, you know, changing and everything, obviously, because, you know, the next season, we're going to have a lot more players that are going to be 100%. We're not going to have as uh, a compacted schedule as we did this year. But if you guys disagree or have, you know, any other disputes that you would like to let us know about in the comment section, make sure y'all put them right there in the comment section. But thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. We, gr we greatly appreciate you guys' love and support and everything. Make sure if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on post notification if you're new to our YouTube channel. And if if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But besides that, it's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King, and we out. We out.